Now, trust me on this one. Your smile today on this show is going to be big, and it's going to last a while because we've got a very special guest tonight. And before I tell you who it is, let me read you a short comment she made recently. I think it says maybe everything that you need to know about what kind of person she is. Of course, you're going to recognize her when you see her, but I want you to see her as her heart will explain. Listen closely. Here's her comment. She says, when I was growing up, cruelty was unusual and kindness was everywhere. Now it's turned around the other way. There's cruelty everywhere. And when I see kindness, it moves me to tears because it's so rare. What this world needs is more kindness. I couldn't agree more. So with that, I want to welcome, with some kindness, a person who is nothing but kind, a very dear friend, Kathy Lee Gifford. Now, some people use their fame and rewards for only the fancy things that end up in People magazine. Kathy Lee has long since chosen to use that public spotlight and point it at other people for the genuine good that they do for all people. In fact, the Emmy Award-winning host has just published a new book, and it's called Herod and Mary, the true story of the tyrant king and the mother of the risen Savior. As you've said, everyone knows Mary, but very few know the story of this tyrant king, King Herod. Kathy Lee, welcome. And why don't you tell us, how in the world did you come up with the idea of Herod and Mary? Right. Well, they're in quite the juxtaposition, aren't they? It's a new series that um, <laughs> yeah. we just got picked for our second book. It's a new series called Ancient Evil slash Living Hope. Because I'm sure you're asked all the time too, Governor, uh, do you feel like there's just more evil in the world now? And I have to be honest and say, you know what? Evil was there in the Garden of Eden in the form of the serpent. It's been with us since the dawn of time. And uh, it's just that everybody has a cell phone now and there's so many cable uh, networks, you know? So we're seeing more and people are capturing more of it. But evil is evil and Satan is Satan. And uh, and, and, uh, and he he wants to steal, kill and destroy. He is the antithesis of God and Jesus who said, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. No, he wants to destroy every living thing. That's what he wants to do. And so we're seeing it worldwide. Now, I'm just crushed, and I know you are too, to see what's happening in Israel right now and in Lebanon and oh, in, in, in the yeah. Gaza. I remember when I first went to the Holy Land when I was 17 years old, the Gaza was, the Gaza was just one of the most glorious. It was like being in the Italian Riviera, just gorgeous. And it's just a cesspool mm. now. And it's, you know, all that, those billions of dollars have not gone to help the people there. You know, it's gone for tunnels and it's gone for artillery and it's gone for... You know, I just feel so for the people there who are being used by their government in quotes for, you know, uh, as, as, you know, on human shields. And they're not, you know, the only people in the world who do such a thing. That's, that's been done in warfare since the dawn of time as well. But it's just wrong. It's wrong. And I long for a better life for all of those people so much. When I first went to Israel, Governor, I remember going to the bazaar and there was a there would be an Arab stall right next to a Jewish stall and then another Arab stall or a Tarzikian or whatever. Even then it was it was like the United Nations of a of a of a of a beautiful bazaar. And everybody was laughing and they were smoking their cigarettes and they were you know, trying to get a good deal and all of that. And I just thought, this is so beautiful to see. And in those years, that was when I was 19, I don't even know, I was 1971. It's the year that I graduated from high school, and I missed my graduation uh, ceremony because I went to the first Jerusalem conference on biblical prophecy in Jerusalem, and that was my daddy's graduation gift. He sent me and my mom there. I mean, I was fascinated by a biblical epic stories even since then, and uh, and I just when I went to study rabbinically in 2012 for the first time. And when I say that, so people understand, I'd been going for years to the Holy Land to study, but I was studying with the wrong Bible. So many of the Bibles are really bad translations. And if you think you're learning the word of God, you're not, you're not. And if you don't have power in your life, yeah. so I read my Bible for an hour every morning. I want to go, which Bible are you reading? You know, because if you're not studying what, what the Hebrew says in the Old Testament and what the Greek says in the New you don't know what the word of God is actually saying. And there's no excuse today. You can Google, what does this word mean? What 
does this word mean in the Greek and so and so and so and just give them the verse and the you know and the and the chapter and the verse and it'll boom comes up original you know exactly what it is. So we really don't have any excuse anymore of settling for uh, less than God's best for us. He wants us to have power. He wants us to put on the full armor so we can face this enemy who wants to destroy us and the whole world and everything beautiful that God made. I mean, when God created the world, as you well know, I'm not preaching to you or teaching, preaching to anybody, actually. I just love to pass on the truth that these amazing teachers have taught me studying what the word of God actually says. So on that first trip that I took, to go very roundabout, I'm sorry, in answering your question, my uh, I learned the story of Herod from a brilliant teacher named Ray Vanderlaan from uh, Michigan, what they call him, Michigan Ray. And, uh, and I had no idea the scope of the life of Herod pre-Jesus because Herod's life was coming to an end, and that's basically our story. The, 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 the so-called king of the Jews who wasn't even a Jew, and all the Jews hated him. Uh, and uh, the so-called king of the Jew, uh, just as Mary carrying the king of kings, who happened to be a Jew, is just an incredible juxtaposition. So I came home on fire to, t- to, to make a movie about Herod. I told Cody, my son, who was at Oxford University at the time, get me five, every book there is on Herod. I want, I want to call Mel Gibson. We got to make this movie. And I read every one of the books and life went on. And I never did make the call to... And I never did make the movie. So about two years ago, my son said to me, because he does have this amazing master's at Oxford University, and he said, Mom, remember how you came home on fire about the story about Herod? And I said, of course. She goes, he says, Mom, you need to write a thriller about it. You need to write a thriller. And I said, well, Cody, I don't really write thrillers. He said, you know, the way Bill O'Reilly said the killing of Lincoln, the killing of Jesus, the killing, that kind of thing. People, I mean, Herod is basically hardly mentioned in the New, in the in the New Testament, and it's all around the nativity scenes, you know. And but his story uh, goes back with with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony and Cleopatra, and he was one of the biggest movers and shakers politically in the world of the of, of pre of the last century before Jesus was born. So we Cody had the, the idea to find somebody who was just brilliant in biblical studies and antiquities and that sort of thing. He, we, he found four or five writers and we, we basically auditioned them. And we found this amazing person, Dr. Brian Litfin. And he had many uh, uh, books already. And he, he was, we said, he, we, he's our guy. Because we needed a guide in, the, in that genre. You know, I can, my, my books, I think this is my 32nd book. I, I've lost track. I really, I can write a this. children's book in an hour and a half. But this took us a, a while. We wanted to get it right because we have a lot of writings on on, Jose, on, on Herod, Josephus, the great uh, Jewish historian. I, lost I was going to say it, it's a phenomenal story because people don't know much about Herod. We know a lot about Mary because we've heard sermons. Uh, my pastor not long ago did a sermon on Herod. It was one of the few I've ever heard. It was wonderful, and, and I'm anxious to uh, to get a copy of the book and, and to see what you've done because I think it's important. Before we take a break, i got to tell you, you and I have something in common. We both made our first trip to Israel just after we graduated from high school. I made mine wow. when I, too, was 17 years old. I've wow, been going back ever that. since. It was life-changing. Yes. Never have gotten over it. And uh, right. that gives us a lot more to talk about after the break. You know, the economy is uncertain. You never know whether your money's worth as much today as it was yesterday. It's one of the reasons I buy gold from American Hartford Gold. American Hartford Gold has earned a five-star rating and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Be sure to tell them Mike Huckabee sent you. They'll give you up to $15,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. Call 844-417-1010 or text Mike to 998899. You'll be glad you did business with American Hartford Gold. Kathy Lee, when we were visiting before, you uh, you said that it was very important to understand that the Bible has a great message, but we need to understand what the real message says. And I think that was a great point, because a lot of times we just read through the words and, you know, people tend to think that Jesus must have spoken a very good form of English when he'd never heard of the language. So there is something about the translation after 2,000 years. Right, right. 
it's it, it, people we just were very very ill-informed there's it, there's so much spiritual uh, i hate to use the word ignorance but that's really what it is in our western culture is that people here don't realize that the, that the the scriptures were written by middle easterners for middle easterners and when we take the body uh-huh. of that information and try to apply it to our traditions our thoughts about things what i love so much about studying rabbinically is that the bible i call it the scriptures now because i when i it's just so general it's got such a bad reputation i i, I don't i say scriptures because that means the original scriptures and i said it uh, when you understand what it says it takes these epic stories that are basically in black and white in the scriptures like the like the story of, of herod and all of a sudden it explodes when you start to understand rabbinically what the Jude- what the uh, geopolitical situation of the day was what the cultural relativity of it was you know when jesus cursed the the, the fig tree on the road uh, because he was hungry and it, and he cursed it and it and it and it, it died he wasn't cursing the fig tree. I knew that when I was kicked out of Sunday school when I was eight years old. I told my teacher, that's not what it means. That's not what it means. My Jesus would never curse something that he made. And I was asked to never be allowed into Sunday school again by my parents. And they were giggling. And I just said, good, I don't like it there. So anyway, years later, I'm studying rabbinically. And I'm told every one of these, there was no buildable wood in a, a Israel, a first century AD. Jesus was not a carpenter. There was nothing big enough to build with that was all brought down from the cedars of lebanon jesus was a stonemason because israel is a desert and back then all they had were like sort of glorified trees the balsam the the uh, the uh well fruit trees of course and and an olive tree and in when you learn the way i'm studying now and i have been for a long time every one of those trees represented a per the particular group of people in jesus's world in the in the jewish world like the, the, um, and what the, the olive tree always, of course, represents the Jewish people. You know what the, the, the sycamore fig tree represented? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus was cursing them for, for, for not feeding his sheep, for lying to them and stealing from them and making his father's house a prayer into a den of thieves. And, and they were all standing around listening to Jesus say this. They knew that he was cursing them. And so did the people following because they knew what it they knew what a sycamore fig tree represented. Now that makes the scriptures come alive like crazy. Jesus, the word for yeah. Jesus and Joseph and what they did in the New Testament is tekton, T-E-K-T-O-N. If you look it up in the original Greek, it means architect slash builder. Well, the English guys who were doing the, the worst, I'm sorry, I get such bad press for this. I don't care. The worst <laughs> translation of the Bible ever is the King James Version. And that's where these guys who'd never been to Israel before, who see that and they go, oh, builder, oh, builder. Okay, then he's, he was a carpenter like us. Well, look at in England, it's trees, magnificent trees. You can build anything. But there were, those did not exist yeah. when Jesus was born. So I would rather know the truth, governor. I was, you know, I, I don't lie to me anywhere in any part of my life. I can deal with the truth. And, and he is the way, the truth and the life. And I want to know what it really says. So Herod and Mary... Uh, takes us back to that world, and and it's it's an, um, I said to Cody when I got home from that trip, Cassidy too, which she was quite much littler. I said, if Jesus is the greatest story ever told, and we all agree that he certainly was, this Herod among the other huge epic villains in the, in the scriptures, this is among the greatest story never told, until now, until our book. I think it's uh, a phenomenal story. It's just a story we never get, and I can't thank you enough for digging into it and, and finding it. But I, I got to tell you, what I, my takeaway from our conversation today is that I never knew that Kathy Lee Gifford got thrown out of Sunday school as a young girl. I think our entire audience will say, my gosh, I knew that girl was a whole lot of trouble, but I never realized it started so early in life that she just was a real that. rebel. No, I got kicked out of the brownies <laughs> before that. And then in, I was 17, you know, right before I went to Israel, I was kicked out of the This is the dark side of Kathy, the dark side of Kathy Lee Gifford changed. that we never knew before. It's why <laughs> I absolutely adore you. You are just one of those great American treasures. I've never right. seen anyone who is so filled with joy, but also 
so transparent and honest. Would you make me a promise that you will come back and let's continue this conversation? Because you're just a whole lot of fun to be around. I'd love you to read it or listen to it on a ride somewhere and call me back again and I'll join you anytime. I'll even drive up to Hendersonville for you, sir. And, uh, and, and we talk more about it. I would love it. to do that on our weekend show because that way we That's can great. just have some fun. Hey, thank you. Always thank a you. joy to get to be around you ever. I just adore you. Thank you very much. Kathy Lee's new book is everywhere. It's about Herod and Mary. And I think it's going to be one that you can either read from one side to the other, or you can get the audio version and listen to it with her wonderful and effusive personality. It'll be one for the ages.